What adjectives do you associate with men? Describe the ideal man. Muscles. Strong, tough, smart. Beard. <laughs> Dirty. <laughs> now, now, now do the same thing for women. Describe the perfect woman. There are certain things that we associate with being either masculine or feminine. And for things like colors or styles of hair or clothing, this seems harmless. But a study conducted by Princeton University demonstrates that in reality, the extent of these associations is much further and has a much heavier impact than it seems. The study shows how we associate certain adjectives and attributes with being either masculine or feminine. This creates set rules and ideas in our minds which contribute to gender roles and stereotypes. These influence how people think, speak, and interact with others on a daily basis. This leads to a myriad of other effects, one of the most notable being the stereotype threat. The stereotype threat affects people who are expected to perform poorly. It's the fear of proving stereotypes about yourself correct. Us humans are affected by how other people perceive us, and the stereotype threat plays on that. The University of Chicago investigated the stereotype threat, and they found that the stereotype threat occupies working memory space in your brain. What this means is that when you're given a task that's associated with stereotypes that are associated with you, the stereotype threat takes up working memory space in your brain, leaving less available to actually complete the task at hand. The result is lower performance, therefore proving the stereotype true. Stanford University looked into this even further. What they did was they found out that on the SAT in the math portion, women on average scored 20 points lower because of the stereotype threat. Experts believe that the cause of this is when you're asked to indicate your gender before beginning. What this does is it brings to mind all of the negative implications of stereotypes associated with you, thus leading women to believe that they won't be able to perform as well in the math section. The University of Washington looked into this even further. What they did was they took two classes of high schoolers and gave them an identical math test. In the first class, the students were told that boys were normally better at math than girls. In the second class, the students were told to disregard any stereotypes they'd heard about one gender being better than the other at math. In the first class, the girls scored an average of 12 and a half. In the second, they scored an average of 15. When we eliminate stereotypes, we can increase performance. Women in engineering or F1 driving or other male-dominated fields could perform so much better if they weren't constantly having to prove their worth as a woman. These gender stereotypes and roles also lead to gender imbalances in, in industries, one being nursing. An idea of what a woman should be has developed. Women are expected to be warm, kind, caring, and clean. These attributes also happen to be necessary for nursing and explain why less than 10% of nurses are male. Advertising is another thing that contributes to these roles. Florence Nightingale promoted nursing as a field for women, hence the lack of men. Nursing has become such an inherently feminine costume that it's the eighth most popular Halloween costume for females in the United States. We can eliminate this gender imbalance when we promote equality. Computer science is another field that's dominated by men. By a show of hands, how many of you guys play video games at least once a week for an hour? Computer science may be a male-dominated field right now, but this wasn't always the case. Women were pioneers of the field. Grace Hopper was seen as one of the first compilers of the computer programming language, and Ada Lovelace was seen as one of the first computer programmers. They were pioneers. The gender imbalances began in the 1980s. The number of women in the workforce is rapidly increasing, but computer science went the other way. And the root of this is said to be in gender roles emphasized through advertising. Early home computers were advertised to little boys by other boys said to be a great platform to play video games on. They often appeared in places geared for boys like a game store. Like Tonka trucks, incredibly popular toy cars advertised to little boys, they appeared in homes for one gender to play with. This gave boys experience with computers, giving them an advantage over girls told to buy Barbie dolls. This helps explain why computer science is such a male-dominated field. Gender-based roles have existed since the time of hunter-gatherers, but these roles were purely based on anatomy. Men would hunt because they're taller and more muscular. Women would gather plants to eat. 
gender roles that aren't based on, on anatomy arose through culture. The ancient Greeks are seen as a great society, but they helped contribute to these gender roles that impact us today. Aristotle, seen as a great, once said, the relation of male to female is by nature a relation of superior to inferior and ruler to ruled. We can see the impact of this ancient Greek mindset today. Only 10% of the people on the Forbes list of most powerful people are women. Only 4.8% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. Plato said something of a similar sentiment. The man who acquits himself well in war should be given more liberal opportunities to sleep with a wife. We see objectification today in songs, movies, and advertisements. In the, middle, in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, these ancient Greek and Roman ideas were held and they continued on. In the Renaissance, these ideas were studied and led to the continuation of these gender roles. In the Middle Ages and Renaissance, women who didn't fit the stereotypical gender norms were branded as witches and burnt. These women were often over the age of 50, single or widowed, and often had knowledge of childbirth, something that men didn't have. The, these burnings of these witches led other women into believing that they needed to conform to their gender roles, otherwise they themselves would be burnt as well. In Romeo and Juliet, Romeo is instructed to stand up and be a man and to stop acting like a woman when he becomes overly emotional upon hearing news of his banishment. We still say stuff like this today. In Shakespeare's time, Women were barred from university, seen as a distraction to men. This meant that women were unable to get higher paying, more qualified jobs. Over time, they began to believe that they themselves weren't as capable as men. An example of this is Japan. We can see it today. In previous years, Japanese political parties have referred to women as baby-making machines. The previous prime minister has told women who delayed child rearing for work that they were exulting in freedom. This enforcement of gender roles in Japanese society has been one of the factors contributing to the economic recession and the declining labor force. Now, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is doing everything he can to get women back into the workforce in an attempt to boost the economy and the workforce. The whole situation could have been avoided if these gender roles weren't so heavily enforced. Kofi Annan once said that gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It's a precondition for reducing poverty sustainable development, and building good governance. It's not just women who are affected by these gender roles either. Men are too. An idea of what a man should be has developed. They're expected to be strong, unemotional, always portraying a tough exterior. This seems problematic, and it is, especially when the man being affected by these stereotypes has a mental illness. They then feel like they're unable to reach out for support or seek a therapist and helps explain why the suicide rate for males is two times higher than the suicide rate for females. This idea that they're not meant to love can be fatal. Can you try to imagine John Travolta and Arnold Schwarzenegger having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation in a movie? It just wouldn't happen because of our perceptions of gender stereotypes. This isn't just a modern day phenomena. In the ancient Japanese samurai culture, samurais who were disgraced or who were facing death were expected to perform seppuku, also known as harakiri. What this was, was suicide by stabbing yourself in the stomach while showing absolutely no emotion. This idea of a stoic man can also be seen today. So these gender roles and norms began with Aristotle and Plato, and they shouldn't be working in today's modern day society. We can be the ones to change it and establish a new norm. Step one to doing so, change your mindset. View men as people, view women as people. Don't expect them to act one way or another just because of their gender. Teach your children all the skills that they need to know to survive. Don't just teach your daughter how to cook and sew, and don't just teach your son how to build and fix things. Your children can grow up to lead a more equal society. Step two, question the things around you. Do you expect men and women to conform by ideals that are outdated? If so, don't expect them to do that anymore. When you see something around you that requires men and women to abide by these rules, you should question it. Seven-year-old Charlotte did just that. She was playing with her Legos when she noticed that there were very few girls, they were all pink, and they didn't go on adventures like the boys. She sent a letter to Lego asking them why this was. Lego then responded by releasing a line of female scientist characters. 
if little Charlotte can do it, anyone can. Step three to establishing a new norm. Change your own actions. Are you a man who's always dreamt of dancing ballet? Go ahead and do it. Shed the restrictions our culture places on people. As Charlotte Bronte once said, I am no bird and no net ensnares me. I'm a free human being with an independent will. We were the ones who established these norms and we can be the ones to change them. Thank you.